Hello and welcome to the latest edition of our community video newsletter. A short film designed to keep you up to speed with the latest news and progress on the Lower Thames Crossing. It's a really exciting time for the project. At the time of recording this video, we're preparing to submit our application for a development consent order and are continuing to work to bring on board our delivery partners so we can start building the new road as soon as we're given the green light. We appreciate that for tens of thousands of you who get caught on the congestion on the Dartford crossing every day, the Lower Thames crossing can't be built quickly enough but it's vital we get the design right. Not only to reduce the impact on local communities and the environment, but to make sure that you can make the most of this huge opportunity. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your patience whilst we carried out our comprehensive programme of consultation and for giving us your feedback. We've recently published an interactive tool which lets you explore a range of maps, images and videos that illustrate how your feedback has helped us improve the design of the project and how we plan to build it. Visit our website to check it out. There you'll also find all our consultation documents, including a summary of the feedback received during the local refinement consultation held earlier this year. But first, a little bit about me. I work in the carbon and energy team, calculating the carbon impact of the Lower Thames Crossing and looking at ways to reduce it. A key part of my job is to try to identify new and innovative methods of road building and help make the whole construction industry more sustainable. A big step towards that was in February, when the Lower Thames Crossing was designated a Pathfinder project. This means we're exploring carbon neutral construction as part of our effort to make this the greenest road ever built in the UK. I'm proud to say we've already significantly reduced our predicted carbon emissions from construction and we're the first major infrastructure project to use its procurement process to target carbon. So what that really means is we've driven out as much carbon as we can from the design and planned construction methods. And now we're challenging our delivery partners, the big contractors who will build the new road for us, to reduce emissions even further. We're aiming to scale up the use of innovative and low carbon materials and technologies, to only use zero carbon electricity, to switch from diesel to hydrogen and electric plant and to reduce and reuse our waste. This is not something we can do alone, so we're exploring green ways of working with partners and suppliers, including local SMEs, so they can all share their ideas. Back in July, we had exciting news when new calculations showed that the carbon emissions produced by vehicles using the crossing would be cut by 80%. This is possible because of new policies set out in the government's transport decarbonisation plan. This would see the sale of new petrol and diesel cars and vans end in 2030, which is around the time that the Lower Thames Crossing is planned to open. Many of you may already drive a hybrid or electric vehicle, and ownership is growing and is predicted to accelerate during the next 10 years. This news is a huge step forward in supporting the UK's progress towards net zero. You can find out more about this and the project's carbon forecasts on our website. Equally exciting was the news announced earlier this year that we're planning to plant one million extra trees across Kent, Thurrock, Essex, Havering and Brentwood. These trees will be planted to help further reduce our impact and enhance the local environment. We've been working with Natural England to develop these plans, which currently mean over 400 hectares of additional woodland planting across the region. We're planning to plant the first trees at our new community woodland at Hull Farm in Brentwood soon, with other planting happening as soon as we have permission to build the crossing. There will be lots of opportunities for you to help with this and we'll be in touch with more information very soon. Over the last couple of months we've been out on the road across Kent and Essex where we held a series of pop-up community events. Thanks to everyone who took the time to attend and share your views. I hope it gave you the chance to speak to us and learn more about our plans, the job opportunities available and how we're designing the greenest road ever built in the UK. Engaging with you is something we're committed to keep on doing and we're planning more community events soon. So do make sure you keep an eye on our website and follow us on social media to find out when and where they will be. We've also just published our new skills, education and employment strategy and announced a new Digital Carbon Academy. During construction, 
the Lower Thames Crossing will provide work for more than 22,000 people, including those employed directly to build the crossing and thousands more through the supply chain. This will be for a number of exciting roles, ranging from architects, designers and engineers to event caterers, sign makers and IT technicians. Everyone who works on the Lower Thames Crossing will be enrolled in the Carbon Academy and it will play a key role in helping develop the skills required to deliver the project and in setting a new standard for low carbon construction, leaving a lasting legacy of green skills across the region. The new strategy sets out how local communities will benefit, with almost half the workforce recruited from within 20 miles of the route. You can read a full list of the strategy's objectives and download it on our website. We're championing local businesses of all sizes to work with us on the project and have an ambition to spend one pound in every three pounds of the construction budget with SMEs. To continue our commitment to support local businesses, last month we held the first Lower Thames Crossing Meet the Bidder events in Orsett and Gravesend. The events were an exciting opportunity for SMEs to meet and engage with the Main Works bidders, currently competing for the three Main Works contracts on the project. Local businesses were also able to learn more about the project's ambitions, procurement process and future opportunities. A huge thank you to over 200 local businesses who joined us. For those that couldn't make it, don't worry. You can still sign up to our supply chain directory to register your interest to work on the project, receive our newsletter and be alerted about future events. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it useful. Please do follow us on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn or get in touch via the website with any questions. Goodbye.